many settings within this guide are optional. Different systems benefit from different values. Each setting within is explained and showcased so that you don't have to rely on verbal description to guess at what they do. A quality increase generally means a performance decrease. Consider my specs and any warnings that I provide. I won't waste time trying to emphasize the importance of my warnings, so know now that they are not given lightly. If we cover a setting that does not exist in your any files, you can add it manually within the appropriate section. If I don't cover a setting, do not implement it. Other settings will be covered, implemented, and further tweaked throughout the series where it makes sense to do so. If you know what an any file is, where to locate them, and or don't care about the technical breakdown, feel free to skip ahead to the Fallout any section of the video. The default location for the game's any files is the operating system drive letter, your user account name, documents, my games, and into the game title folder. The mod organizer location is mod organizer, profiles, the game title. However, MO users can simply click the puzzle icon from the toolbar and open the any editor. An any file is a configuration file composed of sections, settings, and values. A section contains a specific set of game settings that belong to a particular category. A section is signified by a title enclosed by brackets, and it is comprised of all of the settings beneath it. Sections are not case sensitive. A setting is a soft-coded configuration property, and it is located to the left of the equal sign. Settings are not case sensitive. If a duplicate setting is found, the first one, highest up the document, will take priority. The lower duplicate is ignored. Each setting has a prefix, a single letter at the beginning. Each prefix represents how a setting's value can be entered. The letter B signifies Boolean values. These settings can have only a value of 1, which makes a setting true and or activated, or a value of 0, which makes a setting false and or deactivated. The prefix F signifies a floating value. Floating values can be any rational number, positive or negative, and with or without a decimal point. I signifies an integer. Integers can be any whole number, positive or negative, but cannot have a decimal. R signifies RGB, red, green, blue, and or RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha color values. The letter S signifies string values. Strings are generally comprised of text, but they can contain virtually anything. U represents unsigned integer values. These values can be any positive whole number, no negative or decimal points allowed. Values are the variables to the right of the equal sign, which determine the variance of the setting. Comments or notations placed anywhere in an any file that do not affect the game in any way. These are used as points of reference for the individual user. Comments are initiated by entering a semicolon. Pushing enter at any time ends the comment. Allows mods to be used. This should be activated by default, but there is no harm in checking. Enables loader streaming instead of forcing the game to pause when cells are loaded. This should be activated by default as well, but there is no harm in checking. Enable automatic cell purging, which helps with out-of-memory crashes. This is the game's built-in safe way of freeing up heap memory. Mods that perform these tasks do not work correctly in cause issues. They must be established in the any files themselves. Deactivate mouse acceleration. Mouse acceleration links cursor movement distance to the speed at which you move the mouse. Quick movements shoot the cursor across the screen, while slow movements hardly move the mouse at all. GOG owners have this buggy function deactivated by default. Allow multi-core CPUs to utilize more than a single core. This provides better performance and prevents specific game launch CTDs. GOG.com owners have this implemented by default. Higher values will not work. The game is limited to the Xbox 2 core system. Toggles Vertical Sync. VSync caps your maximum FPS to your monitor's refresh rate to avoid screen tearing. I set this value to 1. However, this setting can cause input lag for some, so you may want to use VSync in the graphics drivers instead and set this to 0. Determines your character's, or rather the camera's, peripheral vision. The higher the value, the more you see. 
If set too high, you will receive an unpleasant and at times nauseating fisheye effect. The default values are 75. I raise them to 80. Determines the player's first-person arm and weapon position, allowing you to see more or less of both. The default value is 55. I raise it to 60. Helps to combat, but not nearly all, texture flickering on land in lot objects when raised. When set to 20, in this example, you can see that the flicker is significantly reduced. However, if raised past 8, you will experience a variety of texture clipping issues, such as when viewing your Pip-Boy. The default value is 5. For the potential of some benefit, without creating additional issues, I set this value to 8. Toggles the invisible borders at the edges of the game map, off and on. Those new to Fallout 3 may want to leave this enabled to avoid getting lost. I set this value to 0. Determines the overall density of grass. The higher the value, the smaller and more spaced out patches will be. The default value is 80. Until adding mods later in the guide, I set this value to 100. Makes the player, by default, walk instead of run. Caps lock toggles is setting in game. I set this value to 0. Toggles the ability to use the print screen key for taking screenshots. Perhaps beneficial for those binding additional hotkeys. I set this value to 0. Toggles whether or not the game will temporarily pause when alt-tabbing to the desktop or when clicking outside of a windowed game. I set this value to 0. Determines the amount of active grids to be rendered and processed around the player. A lot of visual quality is gained when increased, but so is a noticeable performance drop. Lowering this value mid-game will corrupt your save file, which means you would have to start a new one to lower it. Higher values will initiate in-game sequences earlier than intended. Higher values than 7 will almost certainly break the game over time. The default value is 5. I set this value to 7. Experiment with it and do some serious consideration before you decide to raise this value from 5. Is said that it should be kept at the value of Ugrids to load plus 1 squared to help combat additional stuttering issues. I have no proof of whether this is helpful or not. The default value is 34. I set this to 64 just in case. Is said to combat interior stuttering at increased values. Again, I have no proof of whether or not this is helpful. The default value is 3. To keep this value somewhat on par with the exterior cell buffer, I set it to 5. Determine how far the HUD elements will be from the edge of your monitor. The default values are 15. To bring the HUD as close to the edge of my monitor as possible without obscuring information, I set all of these values to negative 5, except for I safe zone X wide, which I set to negative 10. Determines the size of the computer terminal interface. Larger values decrease the size, thus smaller values increase it. The default value is 0.15. To fill the screen without clipping, I set this value to 0.138. Increases the number of visible bushes in the distance. I set this value to 1. Nothing within this section is mandatory. While I do recommend each tweak onward, it is up to you as to what you choose to implement and to what degree. Determines whether or not the bloom effect will be implemented. Bloom adds a glow to the lighting in an attempt to make it appear more realistic. However, this option is not dynamic and it can make the sky glow unnaturally bright. Many times, the effect is unnoticeable. I set this value to zero. Determines whether or not the game's HDR effect will be implemented. High dynamic range alters light based on the way it interacts with various objects and surfaces while taking the player position into consideration. This option makes the game world much more vivid than without it, and it provides a more realistic contrast between light and darkness. I set this value to 1. Is the game's anisotropic filtering setting, which affects texture banding. The further away a texture is, the more blurry it will become. The higher you raise this value, the sharper distant textures will be. I set this value to 15. 8 will provide the slightest of performance gains for a noticeable drop in quality. Is the game's anti-aliasing setting, which is directly related to the jagged and crawling lines at the edges of objects. I set this value to 4. The subtle difference between 4 and 8 is not worth the performance impact.
is the same as in the Fallout Ini. It toggles vertical sync. V-Sync caps your maximum FPS to your monitor's refresh rate to avoid screen tearing. Again, I set this value to 1. However, this setting can cause input lag for some, so you may want to use V-Sync in your graphics drivers instead and set this value to 0. Controls the way in which shadow edges blend with their surroundings. However, very few objects in the game, other than your character and NPCs, actually cast shadows. To save on performance, I set this value to 0. Determines the overall resolution of cast shadows. Due to the aforementioned information, to save on performance, I set this value to 256. Manages the game's aspect ratio. Aspect ratio determines the resolution of the viewing window. The higher the setting, the lower the performance. I set these values to 1920 by 1080 to fill my screen without taking away additional resources. Adjusts the visual quality of all textures in game. Zero sets the highest quality, while higher values lower the quality. I set this value to zero. Toggle subtitles for those talking directly to you and for those talking in the background on and off. I set these values to zero. Toggles the visibility of quest markers on the map and compass. If you are new to the game, I suggest keeping it activated. I set this value to zero. Toggle the various autosave options. Autosaves, or rather, quick saves, can cause save file deterioration. I set all of these values to zero. Determines the distance at which grass fades from view. The default value is 7000. I set this value to 18000. Determines whether or not depth of field will be used in game. Most noticeable during a conversation. I set this value to zero. Toggles the help and hint windows that appear at the top left of the screen. I set this value to zero. Affects the transparency of the heads-up display. The default value is 1.0. I set this value to 0.4. Determines the color of the HUD text and images. To know what numbers to enter for a particular color, you need to first look up the hex code for it and then use the provided hex to decimal converter. When entering the hex code, add the letters FF to the end of it to set the color's transparency to 100. The color code that I have chosen for this value, 306-655-0271, represents the color of my tutorial background. Determines the color of the Pip-Boy text and images. The process to calculate the value is the same as UHUD color. Toggles the game launcher support for mod plugins. It should be activated by default, but it doesn't hurt to enter it manually. I set this value to 1. Controls the distance at which characters and creatures can be seen. The default value is 6. I set this value to 15. Controls the distance at which items such as weapons and armor can be seen. The default value is 3. I set this value to 10. Controls the distance at which a range of non-critical world objects, such as rocks and fences, are visible. The default value is 5. I set this value to 15. Sets the distance at which tree lod is rendered. Higher values make distant views much more immersive. The default value is 40,000. I set this value to 250,000. Sets the distance at which object lot is rendered for things such as buildings and bridges. The default value is 50,000. I set this value to 250,000. Control the resolution of water reflections. I set these values to 2048. Consider using 1024 or even 512 to gain some performance. This has been a Gamer Poets tutorial, modding Fallout 3, my way, pre-mod any files. As mentioned earlier, additional settings will be covered for a few mods that specify specific values. Once all of our mods have been installed, we will then go back and do one final tweaking session based on our FPS. A big thank you to GP Warrior Poet Brad Nichols, Scribe of Scrolls Chris Medley, and Tale of Two Wastelands lead dev Roy Batty for answering every question that I had along the way. The next video will contain what I consider to be my Fallout 3 core fixes. I hope to see you all there. If you haven't been to the GP Discord server, please feel free to stop in. I spend a lot of time in there while creating tutorials and working on stories. The feedback that I receive from the community in response is absolutely invaluable. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets, 
Thank you for supporting, and thank you for watching.